everybody, it's Christy back with another video. And today we are going to do a deep dive into these Faber-Castell gold paper sketch markers. Now, I'm just gonna do a full disclosure. I wanted this to be a first look at this set of markers. And it's the second look because I filmed half an hour's worth of footage that didn't have audio. So I've already opened these, I've played with them a lot, but I'm gonna show you them and talk a little bit about um, the, just the swatches and the colors and everything. Um, first of all, it was very difficult to get these markers. I've been waiting and waiting, and I actually used an education connection to get this set. I thought at the time that this was the full set of markers. I have since learned after this week's deep dive that that is not the case. So this is 24 of the line of Goldfaber sketch markers. There is a total of 60 in the line. And later on in the video, I break that whole thing down. I do have some more of them coming. But along with this 24, I also got one in a sketch box that is not in here. So I will swatch it with them. So this is the swatching of these 25 markers. So first of all, let's just go ahead and look at them in order and beauty in the box. Just absolutely beautiful. And I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to leave them in the box because then I can take them out in order and I can swatch them in order without having to re uh, line them up. I'll maybe line them up while I'm standing here talking or sitting here talking for a minute. But what's awesome about these markers from Faber Castell, they are alcohol based markers. Faber Castell has not done alcohol markers to this point. So this is their first in the line to my knowledge. They have two really unique ends. So they've got the, the brush tip end that most people are used to seeing. This one is kind of similar to what I think about when I get a Tombow brush tip marker. It's a little bit more flexible than the Copic nibs. It's a little bit less squishy than the Ohuhu nibs. And then the other side is a fine liner, but it's like a really tipped fine liner and it is flexible. So you can kind of get a little bit of wiggle with this tip as well, which is a really unique combination for a marker. It makes a lot more sense to me than the Tombow ones that have the chisel on the other end. So let me go ahead and let me get these markers out and then we're gonna swatch them on two different sets today. But as I get them out, I'll just go ahead and tell you the color name and everything like that. So we've got a blender marker. That is the colorless blender. We've got one 104 light yellow glaze, 107 cadmium yellow. I think this one goes in after that, which is 109 dark chrome yellow. Then we've got a marker that we're throwing at you guys. Uh, 111 Cadmium Orange. 118 Scarlet Red. 127 Pink Carmine. 119 Light Magenta. 247 in Danthrene Blue. We've got 310 Pale Mint. 240 Aqua. 451 Saltwater Blue. I'm trying to keep these in order here in this box. Hello, that's the order because that's the way. Okay, I got them in the order. We have <laughs> 151 uh, Helio Blue Reddish and these are the names and the numbers and everything of the whole Faber-Castell line. So this is just like everything else in the Faber-Castell line, it's supposed to match. 313 Dark Cobalt Green. And this is something we can test another time. We can test how well these work in comparison because I would like to potentially mix and match these, especially with like my polychromos pencils. That feels like it would be really cool. 312 Fresh Bamboo. 
316 Monstera Green. Love that name and color. We have 173 Olive Green Yellowish. Now we're into our neutrals, so 303 Powder. 186 Terracotta. Which it looks like I have those marker caps switched. Uh, 383 Light Burnt Sienna. Two sixty burnt, or I'm sorry, two eighty burnt umber, and then we've got three grays and a black. So we have natural gray three thirty one, natural gray three three thirty three, natural gray five three thirty five. That is natural and not neutral, right? Oh, it's neutral, sorry. Neutral gray. <laughs> I'm winning today with this, guys. And then black, which is $1.99. So that is your set of 24. Like I said, this guy here did not come with that set of 24. It came in a sketch box. So like, there's the set of 24. This makes 25 that I have that I can swatch right now. All right, I'm gonna swatch these on two different surfaces today. I am going to swatch them here, let me push my markers back just a titch. There we go. Um, I'm going to swatch these on both my render sketch pad. So this is a Crescent Render No Show Through Paper sketch pad that I got from Sketchbox. I absolutely love this thing. If you've never had one of these, you need to get one. They're a lot of fun if you have an alcohol marker collection, especially because you can go uh, all over this and it will not bleed. I will show that at the end because I will do my blending test on here. I will maybe do like a blended rainbow on here. And this is just Canson XL Bristol paper. So I kind of went with an expensive paper and a cheaper paper to kind of show how the alcohol markers perform on both of those. So we'll play with the colorless blender last, but I'm going to go ahead and swatch these. And then after I swatch them, I'm going to swatch them and speed it up. But after I swatch them, I will go ahead and just do a few blending tests and show you guys a little bit um, about how both nibs kind of work on the paper. Alright, so I'm going to do a few more blend tests and a few more other things, but I wanted to show these off as they are right now. So here is the rainbow and then the neutrals in two different color passes. Honestly, these markers blend pretty well just for being a set that's not got a ton of crazy cohesive colors. I did think that this color here, I know it's kind of purpley but it kind of blends nicely with the, with the blues. I actually think these three blues would make a really, really pretty picture. And there's a fourth blue in there too. So maybe we'll do something blue here. So yeah, I think maybe we'll do a blue sphere or something here like that, that we can um, just kind of show off 
how things blend. I always tend to do something that looks like that whenever I am blending. I do want to point out the two different styles of paper. So this paper is going to bleed. Just be aware of bristleboard bleeding. If you didn't know that already, I usually stick something under it. I forgot to do that this time. No big deal. But this guy, you can abuse it as much as you want. And there is nothing on the other side of this paper. So just be aware that that render paper is really cool. You can also use both sides of it. So when you're working with alcohol markers, it might seem pricey up front, but it does kind of have that added bonus of being able to be two-sided, which is super cool. All right, so a couple other things I wanted to mention about these markers. Uh, they are postable, so you can post either direction. You can take this smaller end and it posts into this cap, or you can take the bigger end and it posts into the smaller cap like that, okay? And it clicks in really nicely. Now, I will say that this cap is interesting because do you see that there's like a, there's an actual smaller cave in there for it to fit into? There have been a couple times when I've been going quickly to put the lid on this marker that the brush tip has like wanted to go into the side or I can see it getting stuck on there and fraying. So that is a concern that I have for these markers. It's not a big one. I've been used, like I said, unfortunately, my first look footage got destroyed, got no, had no sound. So um, I, I did play with them for quite a while this week and I haven't had that happen, but it is something that I mentioned in the first look that I wanted to mention here as well. So let's go ahead and let's pick a series of markers that I think would make a nice blend. Blues are always a good blend test. They usually blend well. Purples aren't the greatest sometimes. And maybe we'll do this light blue. I'm actually going to do a, a test up here just to see how these go together before we go with a full-on test. So let's start with the lightest one. Well, actually, let's start dark to light. If we work dark to light, that is going to be a little faster. but I think these are going to look really cool together. I think they will blend together really nicely. And yeah, these markers, they blend really nice. You can't, there is no question in my mind that they're pretty good blending markers. And then let's see, maybe a little more blue, just like kind of in there and then go back to the blue. There we go. I posted it. Okay, and then let's grab this light blue and see if it actually will work with this blue here or if it's too light. I don't know, maybe it's okay. It's kind of got a bluish or a greenish tint to it a little bit. Ah, it works. It works as like a, an undertone, as a go in first kind of color. I think we can go in with that one first, like that. Yeah, I think it's okay. It's a little bit of a different tone than the others. The others are about the same tone, just a different value. I guess that one's a little bit, uh, I don't know if it's warmer maybe. It's just dull. It's like more muted than the others. So I guess that would be warmer technically. Um, and this one is a little bit cooler. I don't think this color is going to be a better match. I don't think that color is going to be a better match. I don't because it's mixed with that one right there. And I don't like that. So, okay, let's, let's do these four. So let's start with, I am going to trace out a round shape here just because for me, it is the better thing to do than to try to draw a circle. And shout out to anybody else that just keeps random circular things by your desk in order to do what I just did. And then I am going to erase. Where's my needed eraser? I'm going to erase a little bit of this. So that we can see it, but it's not going to pick up graphite. And we're going to start in the very center. Actually, I'm going to put something under this page. I'll be right back.
So yeah, there, that's looking real good now. So I feel really, really good about that. I might do a little bit more of this color. That blue is kind of a weird, different tone. So I probably shouldn't have, I should have probably just used the, the clear alcohol marker there, but there, that looks a lot better. So yeah, that's a pretty good blend. And then if we wanted to do, I don't know, like a shadow here that's just gray. We could just pull something out like that. And it looks looks pretty good. So yeah, I think they performed really well. That is with the brush tips. Now let's go ahead and try to do with a different set of colors. Let's go through and do a blending test, maybe with the smaller set so let's maybe do these four might look really good so let's try that so this brush tip here it gives you really fine actually i'm going to use the orange to show it off on camera so it's going to give you really fine detail points but then you can also kind of use the side of it and you just have a ton of control with this brush so again, if I start with the orange, let's see how these blend. I'm like, I'm not getting any drag. There's no weirdness with the nib that doesn't allow me to get a nice blend. And it's a much more controlled blend and I'm getting a lot less alcohol marker kind of out there. But yeah, look at that. Look how beautiful that blend is. Let me actually hold it up to the camera so you can see. But yeah, you're not losing any coverage just because you are using a smaller nib there. So it would be really nice if you were trying to do like some kind of really pretty blended kind of situation. You would be able to get really close together with things. Like this is what immediately comes to my mind is like being able to get really close together for a rainbow or something like that and being able to go back and forth to get that blended color on the edges just blended the right way. So let's actually see if I did a true rainbow, we would start with red down here. We could meld it into the orange. Like that. And then green on the other side. And then blue. I guess this is the blue we would use. And I don't really have a violet, so, oops, I'm capping these the wrong way, so I'm not paying attention. So I guess the closest I can come with a violet would be like this into this kind of, in. this is kind of an indigo color. And then I guess we could do this for violet, even though it's not really. But yeah, I mean, that just allows me to do such a nice controlled blend with something that is really rudimentary, but it is really cool being able to do that kind of a thing with a very thin alcohol marker. So yeah, this is basically all of the testing I kind of wanted to do. So my goal now is going to be to test these markers against two other brands that I think that you would probably be comparing them to. I'm going to test them against the Tombow ABT Pro markers. Let me grab a Tombow marker so that you can see. The Tombow ABT Pro markers are this. They're the same kind of size and shape. So grabbing a gray for a gray here. 
but the difference being that this has a brush nib. Let me compare the brush nibs on these like that. So they're very similar brush nibs. And then the other side of the Tombow markers has this thin chisel. So it's a little bit different. You can kind of get details, but not nearly the level that you're going to get with this Faber-Castell marker. So a little bit of different marker, but we will talk about how they compare. And then I'm going to compare them to the gold standard, the Copic marker, because if you're going to pay this kind of price point for these markers, unless they go on mega sale, I would think that you would be comparing them to something like the Tombow or the Copic. I don't think you're going to go for something that's at a price point like Ohuhu. I love my Ohuhu markers. Don't get me wrong. I just think that if this is your price point, you're probably going to be looking at those brands instead. So I'm going to do those comparisons. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to make the same pictures with all three sets of markers and then come back and tell you what I found when I did my deep dive. All right, ladies and gentlemen, well, to say I went down the rabbit hole with this would be an understatement. I really spent a lot of time playing with these markers and um, comparing them to these other marker sets. So I'm just going to give you all of it. I didn't end up filming myself actually playing with the markers too much, mainly because I everything took so long and to sit under the camera and to draw was just not in the cards. But let's start with the fact that this is not the full set of these. So this is a set of 24. It is the largest set of them that you can currently buy. But the whole set is 60 markers, 59 plus a blender. All right. So in here, what I did was I went on Faber-Castell's website 
and I'm going to hold this up right here and give you all a second to screenshot it if you want it. Okay, there it is. And this is telling you what numbers are in each marker set. So I'm going to give Faber Pastel huge props, sort of. Um, the first thing I'm going to say is I really wish they just offered a full set of the markers. I, I think that every company should be willing to do that. It And maybe they will. This is a new supply. So maybe they were like, you know what? We're going to divide them into sets. But they did do it in a way that if you buy certain sets, you will have zero overlap which I really appreciate because that is something I will do. I've already gone ahead and bought more of them. Um, spoiler alert, I do really like these markers. So I have the 24 set. I now have bought the 12 set, the product design set, and the graphic novel set, okay? I'm missing 12 markers because then this, the fashion and architecture markers also would be a complete, would be the last 12 that I don't have. The blender only comes in the 24 set. That's 200. It's only in the 24 set, which is an interesting choice. And these sets, the portrait, the manga, the kawaii, and the car design, they are all in other sets. So again, if you look at this list, uh, fashion is fashion. Uh, PD is product design. GN is graphic novel. I think that's where the rest of them kind of came from. So again, for the full set of markers, you want the sets that I have circled. What I did was on their website, I went and found the MSRP for everything. So this uh, set is 29, this set is 22, or these, these sets are all 22, and this set is 44. So if you bought all of those sets, you would pay for 60 markers, $3.50 a marker. Okay, so that is the breakdown pricing-wise of the Faber-Castell Gold Faber sketch markers. Now, the Alb or the the Tombow ABT Pro markers, okay, um, they run on Blick right now for four dollars and fifty cents a pop. Okay, um, you can buy sets of these cheaper, but I did a little bit of looking at these, and there are so there's so much overlap between the sets. There is not a clean way to get 108 of these markers. You can buy different sets, but even then, most of the sets come with a black, and so you're gonna end up with like seven black markers. So again, I don't love that. There are not, that doesn't happen here. So this set of 12 doesn't have a black, it just has a really dark gray, um, and this set has the black. So I think it's really cool that they did it this way. I really am giving Faber Castell huge props for that. The only detriment is, like I said, offer me the full set so I can just buy them in one foul swoop if I want to. Um, okay, so that's everything about the pricing. Let's look at how these markers perform. So I did two tests. I did, well, I did three tests. So I did two tests on the render paper. It was just a little ball with a shadow. I ended up doing the shadow a little bit differently on the other two, and then I did an avocado. The reason for these choices was because in this marker set, I tried to find things that I could blend. So I knew I had three grays, so I wanted to do a three gray uh, blend test, and I knew that I had three gray markers in the other sets as well, so I figured this was good. And then I knew that I probably had three greens in most sets. These three greens are not the greatest, but for an avocado, they work because this is the skin color, and then these are the two colors inside the flesh, but I would still need a yellow, which I have, so I figured these would be a nice avocado test. And then the pit of the avocado is a brown set of tri of colors, so I chose that. And then I did choose a single color to represent the shadow that was kind of like a cool undertone because even though these are neutral grays, I think that at least these two, uh, the, well, the Copics are cool grays, and the Tombow grays are also kind of cool. The Faber-Castell lean a little warmer. You can see that really nicely there in that image. I'm going to talk about those that picture in a minute. So anyway, I went through my markers and I did my best to match it. So for the ABT Pros, this is what I ended up with. Let me grab those first. So this was, uh, uh, let me try at the top of the screen to lay them out. So here are the three grays I chose from the Faber-Castell line. And here are the three grays that I chose from the Tombow line. Okay, and then these are the three grays 
that I chose from the Copic line. And they were the cool grays because that's what I have. Oops, I had this, this is my lighter one. And then here's the darker one. So that's what I chose for the gray. So I think I did a decent job of matching. And actually, where is the page where I color matched everything? It's, it's before this. There are too many markers on this desk. Let me flip back to that for a second. Here we go. So the middle line is the Faber-Castell line. Here, it's here. And this is me trying to color match to kind of do the best job that I could both by this test and that test. All right, so then for the greens, it was harder to match the greens because this minty green that the Faber-Castell line has, I really didn't have a good color for that in a lot of my marker sets. So then this is the Tombow equivalents. And this yellow, which again, wasn't exactly the same, but it worked. And then in the Copic markers, we had one, two, three, four. Okay, and then we had the brown markers. I'm gonna move this so I can kind of go along the side here. In the Faber-Castell line, I have these three brown markers. And then in the Tombow, these were very similar. Actually, let me put them in light to dark order. So the Tombows were very, very similar. And the Copics were less similar. And actually, I will tell you, I don't have a dark brown Copic. So I grabbed my Brit Blick Illustrator marker because I happen to know that those markers work really well with my Copic markers. So I knew that it would blend well and it would give me a test that was accurate. Okay, and then the three blues that I chose are a little bit dissimilar. We've got this um, indanthrene blue, this one, I don't know the name of it off the top, but it looks bluer than it is. It's a little bit more muted on the paper. And then we had Prussian blue in the Copic markers. And then of course we have the three blenders, blender one, blender two, blender three. And I did use the appropriate blender with the marker set that it was given to me with, because again, if I'm testing the whole shebang, I wanted to test the whole shebang. Okay, so there it all is. So what did I do for testing? So for every single one of these, I drew one of these on the render paper. And then I also, after that, went back and I drew the balls. I didn't shade the other two balls because the shading wasn't important for me for the test on the cheaper paper. I was testing something that I'll show you in a second here. So I, here's the Copics. I mean, they're my gold standard. They they definitely blend the nicest and I, I, I just feel like they're easy. I know what to do with them. I feel comfortable with them. So this is what the Copics looked like. Here are the Faber-Castell markers in comparison with the Copics. And honestly, I think that they did really well. I accidentally put the dark color up too far on this one. It was an accident. I was holding it in the wrong hand. So this is a better blend of what these should look like. That was my human error. Um, but the avocado turned out, I think that my favorite avocado of the three, and one is on the back of this one, so we're gonna flip it in a second. But I think my favorite avocado of the three is this one. I really like everything that the Faber Castell, uh, the gold Faber markers did. Now, I will say, I tried to only use the brush tips for all three of these because they all have brush tips. These have chisels, the long Tombos have chisels, and then we have that kind of cool flexi nib. But there was a couple times with the Faber Castell markers where I was like, oh man, I wish I just had a tiny thin line. And so I was able to achieve that with, especially like out and around here, with the tiny thin pointed marker on the one end. So I did use that a little bit, but I tried not to use it too much. Now the Tombow markers did something totally wild. So this Tombow marker, look at how much it feathered. I want you guys to see where the, the circle is that I drew and where that feathered to. I didn't color outside the lines that badly. I'm not that bad at coloring. That is what happened to that Tombow marker. But then in other places, it didn't do that at all. Like it didn't do that over here where the avocado was. But man, it feathered like crazy. So I thought, 
is this the render paper at work doing something funky because it's already been used on this side? So I wanted to see. Here is the Tombow in comparison with the Faber-Castell. Again, I think I blend, I can get a better blend a thousand times over with the Faber-Castell markers. I can definitely get a better blend with my Copics. That really wasn't a question because the Copics are the most expensive of the three sets. Okay, so I decided to try the balls again on some Bristol board. So I went ahead and I tested all three on Bristol board because I wanted to see if they were going to feather, if those Tombos were going to feather as badly on the Bristol board. Um, they they kind of feather a little bit still. It wasn't nearly as bad, but then I also might have been putting less alcohol down because I was aware of it. So I'm not sure. I still was able to get a pretty nice blend. Actually, this one looks the nicest on one pass through on the Bristol board. Not one pass through, but like one time through. I did have to go over these ones. And in both instances, do you see how there's that like speckling effect going on with the markers on this Bristol board? So that is just something to be aware of. They both kind of did it. The Tombos didn't. But I still think that the Faber-Castell did as good of a job blending as the Copics. I didn't have a hard time getting ink out of the markers for the Copics, and I didn't have a hard time getting the ink out of the markers for the Faber-Castell markers. The Tombow markers, on the other hand, did give me trouble when it came to getting some of the ink out. I had a harder time with them. So what does that all amount to? Well, here's, here's my thinking. Uh, let's go back to the price list if I can find it. All right, the markers all over the desk were driving me a bit crazy, so I went ahead and I took care of it. All right, so here's what I can tell you about each of these marker companies. Um, Copic, per marker, you're running about $5.50, and then you can get some sets. But the Copics are pricey. I didn't even do a deep dive on the Copics to see if the sets overlap because in general with Copics, I just feel like you want to buy the biggest set you possibly can to start with and then you kind of go from there. I haven't bought Copics in a long time because to be honest with you, I just acquire what I acquire through subscription boxes and I use my Ohuhu markers. So that is the deal with Copic markers. The Tombow ABT Pro markers. They run about $4.50 plus per marker. And that gets a little bit cheaper if you buy sets. And you can buy sets pretty, in like, you can get affordable sets of these. Both at Michael's and at Target. So that there is that going for them that, like, if you are looking for something more affordably, you definitely can get them if you like this long, skinny marker situation. So there is that. But there also is the problem of duplicates within sets. Okay. Then finally, we have the Faber-Castell Gold Faber Sketch. These new markers. Right now, these guys are $3.50 a marker, but that's on the Faber-Castell website. So there's a couple of things that we need to think about with these markers. First of all, you can get them. There are sets that don't overlap. There are sets that do overlap, but the big sets don't overlap, which I think is amazing. They have an awesome nib. Without a doubt, they're probably my favorite combo of nib that I have played with out here. They have great blending and flow. So here's where it gets tricky because this is the price per marker in sets, right? There is no open stock. So will there be open stock? I feel like probably Faber-Castell generally offers things open stock, 
The only worry I have is that this is the gold favor line, and I don't know that they offer the gold favor line open stock. So if they don't offer them open stock, that might be a deal breaker for some people. I can understand why it would be, because if you can't replace one marker as, a, as an alcoholic illust marker illustrator, that can be very hard. And if you're going to pay $3.50 per marker, Copics aren't that much more expensive to pay for. I think for my money, I would definitely not get the Tombow ABT. I happen to have a lot of them. I got them on mega sale. I'm not going to promise you I won't buy more of them if I happen to see them out, but I know when I'm buying them that I'm definitely going to end up getting duplicates. I need to sit down with an actual chart and see how many I have and how many duplicates I have because I bought a ton of them and I really haven't looked at what I truly have in that Tombow set of markers. So that's that's a, a that's a process for another day. Um, but if I was gonna buy markers and I wasn't worried about open stock, I would get Ohuhu's and they even have some open stock now. And I'm not putting the Ohuhu's on here because we're talking about um, markers that are more pricey. We're talking about markers that are not a budget-friendly option. I still consider Ohuhu to be the gold standard that is also budget friendly. So if you want them and you like them, that's fine. Another thing I wanted to mention, let me see if I can find a good example of it here. Um, let's look at, is it this one? Yeah, we can look at this one. Let's see if it gives you a good example. So these nibs seem like they're very similar but in my experience, they are not that similar. I much prefer the nib on this Faber-Castell marker. It feels like it's going to hold up a lot better. This feels like a foam nib, and it already feels to me like it's getting really weak on the tip of it. And I haven't used these markers all that much, but I feel like it is trying to be a Copic nib. So you can see how like does it just looks frayed on that edge already. It's not necessarily frayed, but it's soft. And if you've used a marker like a Tombow before, you kind of know what I mean, that if you use it a bunch, you can really get soft really fast. So I don't find, and I really kind of put these guys through the ringer, that the Faber-Castell markers are doing that nearly as much. And the other advantage is I don't have to worry about using the tip on this one because I've got the tip on this one, which is super tiny and fine. And I can do a little bit of really nice stuff with it if I want to. So I'm just saying that for my money, I think these gold favor sketch markers are awesome. I'm hoping that we'll find out that we get them in open stock because at that point in time, I would say run to get them because they are pretty, pretty amazing markers and I'm really having a good time with them. When I get the other pieces of the set that I have here, I'll actually do a full swatch out, leaving spaces for the architecture and the fashion ones because let's be honest, they're probably going to end up in my Amazon cart before the end of 2024, guys. I have full set syndrome and I have it bad for these markers. So, all right. I hope that this deep dive was helpful. I hope that this gives you some idea if you are comparing these brands of alcohol markers. If you have another brand that you would like me to talk about, I, I don't necessarily have other brands of markers, but I can do my best to look at what they offer and tell you what I think. And as always, I just want to remind everybody, I am an art hobbyist. Alcohol markers are not my main medium. So take my advice for what you will. I just did some very simple tests with them for things that are more complicated or, or things like portraits or um, anime style drawings. You definitely probably want to watch somebody else play with these markers or maybe just get a cheaper set of them. Like I said, I keep going back to this page, but if you're on the fence and you wanna see if you like them or not, get six of the markers that aren't in the other sets. So I would say the graphic novel set would be a great uh, starter play set for somebody that just wants to see the feel of them or the fashion markers, or if you're gonna get two of these, maybe just go for the 12 set. So that's just my two cents on all of this, and I hope that it was helpful. And let me know in the comments below what you think about these markers as well. And that's going to be it for me today. I hope that this inspires you to play with some alcohol markers today, maybe even draw an avocado. And we will see you guys in the next video. Bye for now.